question for you. Have you seen this picture on Instagram lately? If you're an NFL fan, there's a good chance you probably have. And the general point of this picture isn't that Tyrod Taylor should have been the MVP in his 2015 season, but that Lamar's 2023 MVP was one of the weakest we've seen in recent memory. He didn't lead the league in any major passing categories. He was 15th in passing yards, 9th in completion percentage, 11th in passing touchdowns, 17th in passing attempts, and was sacked on 7.5% of his dropbacks, ranking him 25th in the league. By no means am I saying he shouldn't have been in the conversation or shouldn't have received votes, but this idea that anyone who didn't vote for him was a hater is absolute lunacy. That one vote against Lamar Jackson? Yeah. Stupid. That was a stupid Not homer right. vote. The truth about the MVP voters is that they viewed Baltimore's overall team success and attributed it too largely to Lamar. This was not his 2019 campaign. It was far from it. And he did not deserve a unanimous MVP. The big MVP debate throughout the majority of the season was Lamar Jackson versus Brock Purdy. The unoriginal and unthoughtful mainstream had their debates about, is Brock Purdy a game manager? The real question they should have been asking is, if Brock Purdy could be considered to be a game manager, could or should Lamar be painted with that same broad brush. And I'm not talking about as a whole, I'm talking for this specific season. Let's break it down. The main arguments that Purdy haters make about him is that he plays within a system. He only makes calculated throws that Kyle Shanahan dials up for him. He depends on a run game, he's carried by the talent that surrounds him, and the fact that he has a great defense keeps games tight and allows him to win games. But what if I told you that you could make a very compelling argument that those same points could be directed towards Lamar. The 49ers and Purdy, the game manager, were 30th in pass attempts this year. That's because Kyle Shanahan had to manage him, of course. However, the Ravens and Lamar Jackson, the MVP, were 31st in pass attempts this year. Of course, we can't ignore the fact that those stats can be misleading because Lamar Jackson scrambles the ball a lot on those passing attempts. But 85 of Lamar's 148 rushing attempts came on designed runs. Furthermore, a great defense equals a great offense, right? The Ravens had arguably the best defense in the league, they led the league in sacks, they ranked 6th in total yards per game allowed, and only allowed offenses to score 16.5 points per game. Their defensive coordinator, Mike McDonald, became a head coach. The 49ers, 7th in sacks, 8th in yards per game, and allowed 17.5 points per game. Their defensive coordinator, Steve Wilkes, was fired at the end of the year. And are we really going to sit here and argue? that that doesn't make a difference in how a quarterback performs and how an offense stays productive, the media sure didn't take those statistics into account. And the point I'm trying to make isn't that Purdy should have been the MVP over Lamar. That is the last thing I'm trying to say. The point is that the perception that Lamar Jackson was head and shoulders above all of the rest of the quarterback competition in the MVP race is a lie. And additionally, that the perception that Purdy completely relied on a system and his surrounding cast and Lamar didn't is a lie. What I believe wholeheartedly is that when you have seasons where one quarterback isn't leading in the majority of the major passing stat categories and isn't head and shoulders more productive than the rest, the media picks the guy who is doing it for the most dominant team and who does it with the most panache. And that makes sense why both Purdy and Lamar were the two main guys in that conversation. It makes it even more hilarious when they try and argue one guy over the other. They're attributing what he's done in the past, like what he did in 2019, to what he did in 2023. The voters aren't watching every snap because how could you? And they aren't considering that the opinions they're arguing for for one guy could equally be applied to the other. And one thing on Brock Purdy, if he had been picked where Trey Lance was, the perception would be very different. He wouldn't be looked at as a project quarterback who has major limitations, who the brilliant Kyle Shanahan plucked out of a pile and formed into an elite passer who can throw for 30 touchdowns 
touchdowns and have a 113 passer rating. He would just be looked at as a good first round pick. As a matter of fact, he would be looked at as one of the best first round picks of the last half decade. Think long and hard and try and identify a quarterback with those kind of stats who is 24 and seven as a starter in his career so far and has been to two conference championships and a Super Bowl while also being considered a game manager. And I have to reiterate because I know people will get confused and jump to the comments. I'm not arguing that he should have been the MVP. I'm saying that applying the game manager tag to him this season and not to Lamar Jackson this season is absurd. The one area where Lamar clearly shines above the rest is as a runner. He led all quarterbacks in rushing yards with 821, and he scored five touchdowns on the ground as well. Josh Allen, on the other hand, scored 15 rushing touchdowns and had 524 rushing yards. But should rushing yards really determine if you're an MVP? In 2022, Justin Fields had 1,143 rushing yards and eight touchdowns, but he got zero MVP votes. Is the MVP award for the most productive passer? Because that wasn't Lamar. Is it for the best passing stats, for the most touchdowns? touchdown passes, the best passer rating, because none of those were applicable to Lamar. Literally, the two arguments that could be made in his defense are that he was the best running quarterback with average passing stats and that he was the figurehead of the number one seed in the AFC. If rush yards are the differentiating factor, why wasn't Christian McCaffrey considered? He had zero first place votes, but he ran for 1,459 rushing yards and 14 rushing touchdowns. He also had over 500 yards receiving and scored another seven through the air. What about Tyree Kill? He had 1,799 receiving yards and 13 touchdowns and averaged 15 yards a catch. Yeah, yeah. The MVP is a quarterback award, but again, in the case of Lamar Jackson, in comparison to Brock Purdy and Josh Allen, the only differentiating factor were his rushing yards. And I say that because wins are truly a team stat. We don't take into consideration the coaching stability, the defensive performances, the special teams performances. If you do say that those things matter, then the Tyrod Taylor meme would be true. And in the case for Josh Allen, he threw for more touchdowns, ran for more touchdowns, had four game-winning drives to Lamar's one, and had 300 more total yards on the season. Yet Stephen A. Smith had a spaz session at the idea that Josh Allen got one first place vote. That one vote against Lamar Jackson? Yeah. Stupid. That was a stupid Not homer right. vote. Probably scared to go back in the locker room if he had voted against 100%. Josh Allen. Wake up, dummy. This was not Lamar's 2019 season. It was very, very far from it. Yet we've all become parrots saying, oh, he's unanimous. He's unanimous. Again, I ask you, by what metric? And seriously, ask yourself this. If Josh Allen played for the Ravens, what would their record be? Would they still be the number one seed? I would think so. They were the most complete team. Conversely, what if Lamar played for the Bills? I'd be willing to wager that if the Bills were the number one seed this year, Josh Allen would have been the MVP. And you might say, no duh, but that is the issue that I'm trying to make known to you. Lamar was not responsible wholly for those 13 wins the same way Brock Purdy wasn't responsible for the 49ers 12. I think if we're being completely objective, Josh Allen had the most dysfunction around him. He had his offensive coordinator fired. He had a lot of turmoil surrounding his head coach, yet he dug his team out of a hole and got the Bills to the playoffs. I think he was more responsible for his team's success than Lamar was for his, or Brock Purdy was for his. Again, I mean, just look at all of the Bills injuries on defense. Lamar and Purdy both had much more stability surrounding them. I think you can still obviously make the case that Lamar was the MVP in 2023. To say that it should have been unanimous is the most absurd, casual, unthoughtful load of garbage I've heard in quite some time. The fact is that this should have been a very tight year of voting in the MVP race. Josh Allen should have had his share of the vote. Brock Purdy should have gotten a nod. But more importantly, this should have been the year that a non-quarterback was very close to at least winning. Christian McCaffrey and Tyree Kill should have been right up there. And we need to stop saying that the MVP is a quarterback award. 
if a non-quarterback can win the Heisman, why can't a non-quarterback win the MVP? There have been some egregious misses over the past 15 years. The first video I actually ever made was about JJ Watt being robbed in 2014. And I still believe that to be true. I think that is one of the worst misses of all time in the MVP voting. But an even worse one comes in 2009 with Chris Johnson. The guy breaks the all-time scrimmage record with 2,509, rushed for 2,000 yards, scored 16 touchdowns, and got zero MVP votes. The MVP is only a quarterback award because the media says so and people repeat those statements. They become intimidated from idiots like Stephen A. Smith who will blast them on national media if they go against the grain. And that's not the way that it should be. Lamar Jackson is one of the NFL's most talented and exciting players of all time. That is without a question. But he was not the unanimous MVP this year. He should not have been close to being the unanimous MVP this year. And if you feel otherwise, please light it up in the comments. But just remember, he was 15th in passing yards, 11th in passing touchdowns, 17th in passing attempts, 9th in completion percentage. He was the benefactor of being a quarterback on a team with amazing talent, great coaching, and the fact that this is held against some and ignored in the case of others is a reflection of the issues that we face as consumers of this sport. Change the conversation think for yourself and ask for more justification for these opinions. Present the information and make them back up their decisions. It's okay to feel that way, but back it up with true objective logic. If you're a Baltimore fan, I'm sure you're upset by now, but just know I respect, I enjoy watching Lamar. His 2019 MVP season was truly truly something to witness and remember. That was a true unanimous MVP season, but this was not. So thank you guys so much for watching. Please like, comment, share, subscribe. We've got a lot more great stuff coming. Thank you to everyone who checked out last week's video. We're really looking to build on all of this and just put out the best, most objective, well thought out, NFL football and sports content on YouTube. So thank you guys. I really appreciate it. We'll see you in the next one.